Welcome to Spad Reads, not your typical rereads podcast, a 17th shard series where we reread the Cosmere and are giant nerds about it. Today, we will be talking about Alloy of Law and its place in the wider Cosmere. This episode will have full Cosmere spoilers, up to and including the most recently released book, Rhythm of War. Joining me today is Mish. Hello, I'm Mish, first rainbow rose. Also joining me is Ian. Hey, I'm your writer. And lastly is Rosemary. Hello, I'm Kay Myth. And I'm Jessie, uh, Lady Lameness on the forums and Discord. So, Alloy of Law, there is some juicy things in this book that tie into the wider Cosmia quite nicely. Mm-hmm. There are, are some interesting things, particularly like we were talking about before we started recording, the men of red and gold. Yes, yeah. Something that I noticed this in this read that I hadn't noticed before is that Miles's preferred cigars come in a box that is also red and gold. I don't know if that's indicative of anything or just a quacky coincidence, but I noticed it. I have definitely seen people talking about that and whether it is related. Cause that that oh. is that's quite the coincidence. So for the person who has not stayed up as much as she should have. <laughs> uh, what is the significance of the red and gold? So it's when when at Miles' execution, he's shouting to everyone, you know, just you wait, the men of red and gold will come and you will worship them and, and yada yada. He's just like ranting. Hmm. But everyone wants to know who these men of red and gold are who they're associated with is it odium is it autonomy mm. who is trell because he also mm. talks about worshiping trell, trell which yeah. we know is connected to the wider cosmere mm-hmm. and, and connected, like, to, connected the wider, to the wider set yeah, yeah the set and the wider um era two <laughs> the deep plot yeah of the de- yeah. the era overarching two. plot of era two so that this is like some nice rather obvious seeding at the beginning to start the questions off i think <clears throat> something else i find interesting with miles and the set both being linked to uh to trell is how miles never really wanted he needed a backer but he doesn't really trust the set or he doesn't like suit and he wants to Mm -hmm. run independently so it seems like they've converged on each other but are we're both connected separately to trell and there's Mm -hmm. there's some strings being pulled working out of convenience Mm -hmm. with each other instead of following the same goals where like and speaking of like the wider cosmere in Rhythm of War, like in Harmony's letter, like he mentions like like crafting a sword. I, I don't remember the exact phrase uh, fr- phrasing of it. But in the climax of Alloy, it's wax is compared to a, a sword. It's like I think I'm pretty sure it's Miles that says it. It's like you are a weapon, you like you are a sword. It's like, oh. Cause like reading Rhythm of War is like reading that epigraph i'm like oh that has to refer to wax and so it's like oh almost certainly because wax is the sword it's really interesting because i did not think it was wax when i read rhythm before um but also just from the meta perspective of era 2 Mm -hmm. didn't exist originally and it was something that brandon put in to the cosmere at a later point so it sounds like he's very much not just put era two in as its own self-contained thing like this is fully integrated now and like Mm -hmm. crossing over and there there are tendrils going in every direction right here alloy was first released he modified where it is in the greater timeline like two or three times he still hasn't Mm -hmm. figured it out like he keeps saying different times currently and hedging his bets we know it's between the first and second arcs of Stormlight, but exactly Brandon, where Brandon has not- said that it might not be. Like, yeah, it's like, it's either between the arcs or it could be as late as um, Stormlight Seven. Like th- that's like the bound the bounds like we okay. have currently. He's he's still fine tuning things. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I do feel like this was kind of a happy accident for him because mm-hmm. it's adding so much to the greater Cosmere mythos 
the way he's mm-hmm. been able to build this. And yeah. it just kind of makes me wonder, well, what would he have done if he hadn't had this era pop out, out of nowhere? I don't would know. Some of these elements have existed somewhere else, or mm-hmm. was this just an accidental deepening that is serendipitous? It's like, was Harmony's role this big initially in his mind, or did, mm-hmm. like, say, Zed get a bigger role because of Era 2 and, like, the fact that he's now in the Epigraphs as well is very interesting because it, it, there's a clear crossover with what's going to happen on Rosha, like, going forward and how that plays into Skadriel. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, did did Brandon mean to do that initially? Oh, just and, uh, and like Brennan has said that um, he did move things from what is now Era Three backwards in time for Era Two. So like it wasn't just a side story. It's like there is important Cosmere stuff happening. He's also compared like Era Two as like laying the groundwork for Era Three to be this big epic again, which is really exciting yeah. and we should talk for a moment about lessy and bloody tan and what happened yes. in the prologue because yes. there was a time when i would be like no stasis couldn't have done that on purpose and i eh, those are some cult choices you made there says is there really mm-hmm. no other way to get waxed back to ellendale like i don't know Tell well and truth. i mean did he Brent or is it confirmed that Lissy's movement was her being controlled or was that an ATM? Oh, well, we know it was an ATM because we okay. know that to, uh, we know from Wobbs that Bloody Tan didn't have ATM. That doesn't mean, however, he didn't have Electrum. But That's we don't true. know exactly what happened. We know that there was a plan in place and we can't really get too much into this because full Cosmere spoilers aside, I don't want to get too much into Shadows of Self stuff before we yeah. have the shadows of self mm-hmm. but that we know that this was a deliberate plan to get wax back to ellendale but you know maybe if leslie had just said hey maybe we should do this thing i'll go with you it'll be okay and you know maybe it'll be scandalous to have me as your wife but what ifs we'll, we'll, we'll deal with this together we'll work and out. Like, and, you know, even being honest that there is bigger stuff at work that he's needed for was it really is he really going to be that stubborn about it that he wouldn't have done it even knowing that there were world shattering things at stake mm-hmm. here potentially i mean i think part of that would have then been, been uh well how do you know and then there's the mm-hmm. whole conversation of uh what do you mean you're one of the faceless immortals mm-hmm. slash a colos like he has an Andra, entire Andra. Andra. Yeah. What? <laughs> the, the, the ones with the k and the face <laughs> and the bones and the, and the that would have been a very different story <laughs> unless yeah. he was a coloss <laughs> but i mean he has a secondary identity crisis not just i mean actually he has his entire thing isn't oh no i killed my wife it's what do you mean my wife isn't who i thought she was Mm. but that Mm. also is its own yeah yeah it's like and at least you know we know harmony can talk to him and i know harmony doesn't like to interfere but i feel like interfering with a little bit of the truth earlier on could have saved some pain down the road Mm -hmm. do we do we know that harmony was controlling bloody tan and behind no not for sure no okay Um, we (sighs) but we suspect or we suspect that there was something else going on there because it's just very interesting because all all the bodies that he hard had. to discuss without going down to shadows of self yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so, so we, like, we can it, probably it, dig into that more later yeah i think this might be something to table for shadows of self we've seen the the theory that the bodies that bloody tan had strung up uh on display for wax um were spiked and there's the potential that they were hemologic spikes which is just very interesting mm-hmm. If Harmony was behind Bloody Tan, because Harmony doesn't like hemology. Actually, does, I think, 
lead into the note that I had, I'm pretty sure that it is Bloody Tan that says it. He says something about like doing the survivor's work or seeing the survivor or something mm. like that, which mm. when you first read it, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the same as somebody here saying that they've seen. But now that we know the bigger Cosmere as a whole and the fact that Kelsier's back, and Kelsier mm-hmm. is actively oh, spreading is. knowledge about hemallergy around. It could yeah. be that he was taught not by Harmony, but if Kelsier showed up and happened to be friends with this guy and, you know. Damn it, Kelsier. Gave, <laughs> just, gave, so much in the Cosmere really boils down to damn, damn it, Kelsier. Kelsier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it's definitely, you know. It's a could they be hemallergic spikes Kelsier needed or Kelsier oh. taught him about? Because oh, we don't know much yeah. about the victims, I don't think, and whether or not uh, they were victims, allomances or they're victims of previous murders that he did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, if they're spiked into the wall, though, I don't know because we know that hemallergy doesn't hold its charge super well, so I don't feel like those would be very useful after having been. It, yeah, it has to be either in a live body or coated in blood. I wrote a and whole thing about been, this. These people had been mummified to the point where there were no liquids yeah. left inside. So I think it was just spikes are convenient for sticking people to walls and making them pose. Well, but not all of them. Thematically, it's like very evocative. Yeah. yeah. So well, like from a meta them. perspective. Yeah. Uh, not all of them are spiked up either. There's one of them that was a geologist or something who is said to be kneeling down over like a rock I formation. You still had them like attached into place because yeah. you kind of have to. It, it, it. But, but there was also necessarily wires and stuff. spiked. That yeah. would be wires Just and things. So the, they're not necessarily all spiked to the wall. Worst taxidermy ever. Best taxidermy mm. ever. Yeah. I mean, those could be the same thing. I don't know if I would call it foreshadowing, but it's something that does echo something in um, Bands of Mourning, which is uh, Miles and Wax have this conversation about the law um, during the climax. And all, and Miles' whole point is like the law is flawed and like it doesn't do enough. Like look at like d- these rich folk at Ellendale write the laws and like look how let's how the basin is faring, like the roughs are faring. And Wax's point eventually boils down to like, yes, the laws fall short, but they stop the worst of it, which Harmony's whole thing at the end is like, he has made the decision of like, okay, like this is where I'm going to stop things. So like the worst never happens to the world. Mm. And so it's like a nice like echoing of each other, I think. Mm-hmm. Where it's they're coming to a similar concept of it's like you don't have to be perfect, you don't have to prevent everything. You just need to prevent the worst of it. it makes me think about just a random thought for the book. I loved seeing the uh, way that the world has transitioned, and like, mm-hmm. oh, all trees need to bear fruit, and. Mm-hmm. When you go to university, everybody needs to study medicine and a few other things. And it's just fun to see the decisions mm-hmm. that Seizet has made on, in regards to Lundell and in regards mm-hmm. to kind of how he nudged the world. Well, was, I don't know if I would necessarily attribute those two, like the, the trees bearing fruit and the university to Sazed himself. Because it, I, I think Maybe a lot of that was came down from in the like the Bond. others, but like one. Sazed definitely like provided like guidance because like, like he was the one that says like make sure to make your streets super wide, wider than you think, mm. and which is becoming useful now because of cars. Well, and he actually made the basin. Uh, at one point, it said that the basin is like extra fruitful or something and like it's interesting to see especially like this is the book where we really see Ellendale the most I would argue like the city itself mm-hmm. is a little bit more of the focus than in later books but it's interesting to see how it compares with the rest of the world also I'm not sure it's a complete discussion of alloy of law without about Ellendale and Allendale 
being so similarly named. Yeah, and the fact that it's named after Ellendel, it's not named after Vin. Like, there is a city named after Vin, like, Elsewhere. somewhere else. But, like, the main city isn't named after Vin. Why? Especially with the huge crust that Spook had on Vin, and mm -hmm. we're pretty sure that Spook is the name, the one that named the city, so it makes yeah. much more Vin sense for him. That, well, Vin would have wanted me to name it after Ellen. But then, obviously, oh. Allendel is named after Elendi. But it, it's just there. Who has been dead for like yeah. thousands of years. Damn it, Brandon, mix up your phonemes a little. It's okay. <laughs> like, you can just be like me and pronounce it as Elendel. Oh, I, I, I can't do that. I was waiting for those faces. It was great. Eric does <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> Look, in my <sighs> mind, his name was Elin, so it's Elendel. Nope, nope. Graphic it audio tracks. says you're wrong. Yeah, I mean, graphic audio pronounces as Mare instead of Mare, so yeah, I, I, I'm not going to no. use that as my standard. <laughs> Probably the best thing that, that uh, this is a total tangent, the best thing that graphic audio gets wrong is when Vin talks about her mother killing her sister messily, and it thinks that that's the the her sister's name, oh, no. and it calls her <laughs> Messily, and I'm like, no! <laughs> That might have ended up on the copper mind at some point. I, yeah, I it, do I'm have sure vague memories is. of someone it, trying oh. to like say her name it's was never not messily. funny though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. It but. yeah. It it just like really guys. That that's that's the biggest mistake. That and the fact that uh, the other thing that really trips me about graphic audio is the fact that the voice actor who is Wayne is the same one who voiced Ellen in Era One. <laughs> Oh, uh, that, now that with the accent, it's not so bad, but I'm, I'm apparently good enough at recognizing voices that I recognized Miss Minutes' Twilight Sparkle fairly quickly, uh, but uh, reference to Loki. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it's one of those things where it's, his voice is very well disguised by the accents that Wayne does, because Wayne's accents don't sound anything like Ellen, but it's the same guy. And it's hilarious. And and after a few minutes of you going, huh, then you just said slide in and it's fine because he's a good voice actor. Speaking of accents, it drove me crazy because I've always pictured Wayne's accent as being more Cockney. Mm -hmm. If you were to like do an Earth analog and in the audiobook, Michael Kramer goes for Australian. I was actually thinking and, Australian. And in graphic yeah. audio, he's Irish. I would be okay with Irish. Yes, Irish I makes really sense. Love the, I love the Irish as being his native accent. It sounds really good. And then he mm. just branches out into other things. Yeah, Irish makes sense. Cockney kind of makes sense. Australia, I mean... I think it's I, the use of the word mate all the time, which, like, I know mm. Brits also British do, but, like... A, that's a UKism, too. Yeah. Oh, but I, I feel like yeah. it is more of an Australian thing than a British thing at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's true it is very much associated but then again to be fair the uk doesn't have giraffes so we'll talk no, about they that don't. more in chat <laughs> oh um, yeah so there was one other thing that uh, i wanted to bring up in the cosmere stuff which is sort of more like self-contained but okay so we know breton the, yes. the oh General. yes we know he was replaced yes. by a chandra because it's really yeah. freaking obvious and but like we killed him and why then said oh. yeah yeah why it's like we also dead? know he, he's ten soon we know it's ten soon at the end okay but like we that don't I'm know trying, like I, how I'm he trying, died yeah. yeah i'm trying to reread one book at a time reread record and then reread the next one yep. and record yeah. i don't want them all cluttering mm -hmm. up in my brain but who killed breton and why? Yeah. I mean, why is he dead in order to be replaced? Did did one of the Chandra kill him on Harmony's orders? That I, I think awfully, so. Yeah, I, awfully, I think so. Be awfully cruel for just No, but I, I think it was deliberately to get Wax into the Constable yeah. system. And then but also um, Marassi in the next dude? book. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, or or he, did he uh, just happen to have a heart attack at the right time? Yeah, it's like we don't know. I don't I'm think. I, I'm really hoping you ask. Um, 
Go oh, ask Brandon. <laughs> yeah, like Jordan who killed question. Brandon. Um, and it's because killing people is against like the Kandra's orders. Like yeah. they, they're not supposed to kill people. Some do because they're they're they have free will, but seems kind of odd to be a thing that they're doing on Harmony's orders. At the same yeah. time, it's it makes sense for a uh, ruin preservation standpoint of if you want to preserve this uh, work that you've done. No, it, it's very preservation and cultivation have always been very, very similar to me in that sometimes to preserve have to cultivate it's like on yeah. the balance of things of because i really think it like it was coming down from harmony because harmony needed wax to be in this certain position well the balance of yep. things killing this one person to get that done was worth doing uh but quick story about this part of the book because uh it was a bit funny when i was reading this i only got like to the first uh questionable thing and i turned to eric and go I'm pretty sure that Brenton is a conjurer. Then I said it to some people online after I was like, oh, wait, no, he is a conjurer. I wonder who the conjurer is. And um, I think David Windrunner was like, oh, yeah, it's Tensoon. I was like, oh, okay. The, the fact that he was Tensoon, though, damn it, Tensoon, you're a better actor than that. Are you just that out of practice? Because that is just the worst impression of anyone you have ever done. That's and, true. Like, that's part of why I don't think this was, it was part of Harmony's plan. I think he died through random means and that Harmony and Kendra were taking advantage of that fact. Or like, what about what about if it's a last minute have to swap? Like a situation of oh, he is about to arrest Wax and Wayne and that's not going to work for me because if they're in jail, they can't do the things they need to do. Um, we need to take him out now so I they didn't have a like, chance. I feel yeah. like Harmony like, having preservation's ability to see the future, though, I think he would have seen that coming. Yeah, it's I, I, I just I don't see Harmony murdering a guy for this like he yeah because like he can see the future like he's going to be much more crafty about his manipulations because it, like very, if yeah if he did kill like he's just as bad as shadows himself palm says he is like it's like because like oh like he's deciding who lives and dies like no he's taking advantage of who lives and dies yeah, so it, there's it, a distinct difference. One is him, okay in my book. Killing him deliberately would have been a very extreme solution to a problem that had a number of other potential solutions mm. to it. At the same time, though, as we've established earlier in the episode, <laughs> Harmony is not against going for the extreme example because instead of saying, hey, Lissy, you should get your husband back to. Ellen Dell, any way possible. He goes for like. Do Let's they have her. a conversation? It's, Probably not. Because like I, this is getting into shadows of self. It's like I don't think Lessie wanted Wax to go back. That's why like things happened the way he did. Like Harmony had to force the issue. So it's like she he That's had it. to like remove her out of off of the playing board. That makes so sense. like she couldn't like keep him that, there because I haven't reread Shadows yet. Yep, yeah, same. I don't know how explicit that is in the text, or if that's just my headcanon. No, I think that can, is. In the no, text. you're right. You're right. That. I I mm -hmm. forgot. I mean, we can always re re, re or re visit this discussion once we get there yeah. and yeah. Yeah. that you're gonna say we can always reread Shadows. It's like that's the plan. <laughs> 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 or, or my brain kept on trying to say revise and it was like wait no so i have one more meta note on Allery's place in the cosmere which is we have an arranged marriage which is a trope brandon uses an awful lot yeah he yeah, does at least i like this version of it the best of any of them so there's at, something at least they don't immediately fall in love Looking at you, Elantris. 
So oh, Jane Roger, and Raiden. So they corresponded beforehand enough to get to know each other. Like they were in love. That's what they wanted. They yeah, were, they, they were already pretty infatuated with each other when they. they okay, that's fair. I I must admit I haven't read Elantris in a very long time. Oh, I just remember being like I I don't want to see another arranged marriage where they're just like completely fine with it. Mm-hmm. That, uh, if you want to look more at one, you'd look more at uh, Shalon and Adolin, who yeah. Adolin is a womanizer, Shalon is a country bumpkin, and yet somehow they hit it off perfectly, and yeah, they're so cute together. They so I'm like, yeah. I, 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 I like the romance, so I'm willing to... Eh, well, we won't go into Ellen and Finn. <laughs> The most important of Cosmere connections. Hoyd attended Mish and Josh's wedding. Yes! And knows Mish and Josh. Yeah! Just good friends, sir. Yeah. Well, you're really and nice to them. They might introduce you. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, mm-hmm. Brandon has said in multiple things that, no, he was just visiting friends. He wasn't doing anything. He was just visiting friends. And it's like, how are they friends? How does <laughs> I, he know I, them? Or give me more. Okay, this is. I want to see that scene from Hoyd's point of view. The, the I want to see that scene from my point of view. <laughs> <laughs> so your own you, point of view, you can write it. I think that Hoyd was there for a reason. The fact that Hoyd turns up at a big scene, that's a shootout. That is very relevant. It's hard for me to see that as just coincidence, even if he was also visiting friends. Except for Brandon has officially said that he was just there visiting friends. That's part of why I I want to see this scene from his point of view, because I want to see what what his reaction is to seeing something major unfold in front of him that he has no felt no urge through his weird ferrochemical thing to, to interfere in. He's just like, oh. So this is what it's like to be a bystander. <laughs> well, is he even there at that point? I mean, it's at the very beginning. You know, bride and groom come out and are clapping and then they start to eat and he glances over and we're chatting with Hoyd. And then it's a good 20 minutes before. Uh... I mean, the man showed up to a wedding reception and didn't even stay to eat. That's... I... Well, but he looks like a beggar. What if there's a noodle dish coming? He can't miss the noodles. It's Hoyd. Has a the man loves noodles. his noodles. He has a thing. F- he knows instant noodles will be invented on Scadrial, and he <laughs> wants them. This is reminding me of waffles. The discussion of Scadrial has waffles. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that Delicious. everybody knows. This is uh, thanks to uh, one of the original founders of the site has a uh, love for waffles and asked Brandon if Scadrial has waffles. So even from era one, Scadrial has waffles. Which is why is one five. of our re- one of our reputation ranks is Scadrian Waffle Cook on nope. the forum. <laughs> which yep. the best rank. makes more sense than Scadrian Waffle Clock, which is what I thought it said for an embarrassingly <laughs> long amount of time. And them peeks into the background of the site. Yes. Mm-hmm. And and if you're very lucky. Uh, and you have an account on the shard. Someday you will briefly glimpse yourself at the rank of so elite. Hoyd can't compete. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, uh, that's some old internet that memory. Joke, you are far too young. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Thank you for joining me, everyone, and thank you for watching. You can find us at seventeenshard.com for all your news, discussions, theories, and fun that you could ever want. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, leave us a review on iTunes, subscribe on YouTube, and you can support us on Patreon. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.